In our ever-industrious and commercial world, the efficient use of electrical power is essential. It's essential from an environmental point of view, where efficiency means the generation of less greenhouse gases, such as carbon dioxide. It's also essential from a financial point of view, because the less power you use, the less you're charged. Finally, it's essential for the design of an electrical installation, because inefficient use of power can mean that larger, more expensive cables and distribution kit will be needed than may actually be necessary. In this video then, we'll focus on one particular aspect of efficiency, which is known as power factor. So let's start by investigating what can happen to electrical supplies in relation to different types of load. Thinking of this as just single phase, the 360 degrees of rotation at the alternator results in a sine wave corresponding to 360 degrees as seen in the diagram, with 0 degrees at the start, where voltage is 0, 90 degrees at the point where the voltage is at its most positive. The proportion of the peak power waveform which is positive is known as active power. This is essentially the real or true power that's used by the load to do the work it needs to do, be it a motor, a light or whatever. So on paper so far, our 2300 VA can accommodate our 2000 watts of power. However, if we consider power factor and the fictional example of a purely inductive load, this motor could in theory have up to another 2000 volt amps flowing at the same time, which will well exceed the ratings of both cable and circuit breaker. As the resistance increases, this causes the lag between the current and voltage to reduce until at a point where the resistance is so high it swamps the impedance from a power factor perspective. Using phasor diagrams make it much simpler to determine the angle phi between voltage and current. Once we know phi, we can use our simple formula to determine the power factor, and that is the power factor is equal to the cosine of the angle phi. 